This is the first in a series of three or four lectures, lecturettes, talking about systems of linear equations. First, we're going to start with some background. Uh, just to review, I want to review the concept of a, a matrix uh, product. So if we have a matrix, we'll talk about a 2 by 2 matrix A with the coefficients A11, A12, that's row 1, and row 2, A21, A22. So again, the subscripts here, the first subscript is a row number, second subscript is a column number, uh, and then we have the vector x, which I will write as a column vector, x1, x2, has two components, uh, and that's a vector. Oops, so I can't slide this up, one second here. Um, I'm going to multiply these together, a times x, so this is a matrix times a vector. We have A11, A12, A21, A22 times X1, X2. Vex, matrix times a vector. Got to be ready to move this up. There we go. Of course, you got to use your thumbs. Um, so this is like the matrix matrix product we talked about, except it's a two by one matrix versus a um, sorry, two by two matrix versus a two by one matrix. So again, the first element is the dot product of the first row and the first column. So there's only one column in this matrix, so it's row column. This is going to be equal to a vector B, and I'll write B down here. Dot product of first row, first vector. So we have A11, X1 plus A12, X2. Second row of B is um, second row of A, A21, dotted with, make sure I can do this, uh, the vector X1 plus A22, X2. So now we did second row of A, dotted with our, our column here. And that's a vector b, and b is also, oops, b is also a um, b is a two by one vector, same as x. So again, we did b equals a times x uh, to produce that result, and it worked in this case because the critical thing is that the that the dimension of the row, which is equal to 2, has to be equal to the dimension of the column here, which is 2. And that allows for that inner product to happen. Um, this, let me just flip it around. This is a fundamental thing, which we will express, we're going to use to express a system of linear equations into an equation of this form. So we'll see that this represents a system of linear equations. And we'll talk about what that means. This fundamental problem right here um, can represent a lot of things. We're going to be looking at this from a very simple example of beverage pricing. We're going to be using, uh, written in this form, we will look at our age structure models written in this form. Uh, your homework problem will, um, in your homework problem, you're going to be fitting a polynomial to a um, series of points and it will result in a system that looks like this. Um, and there are other uses, particularly in the world of um, solving partial differential equations um, of the elliptic form, um, will result in a system of equations that look very similar to that. So there are people that have literally dedicated their lives to solving that system of equations and we'll see um, and what we'll see is that when we write our system, uh, system of linear equations, we'll have this will be known, this will be known, and the question mark will be this. What is x? Solving for x. Um, the, that's a vector of unknowns, given a and b. Um, and again, it represents a 
whole lot of different problems. So that's a good thing. If you can figure out good ways to solve that, you can apply it to all different fields, uh, incredibly disparate fields. Um, so let's just uh, look at a couple problems and see how we can write it in this form. The first one, and we're going to look at this in more detail uh, in the next lecture, but let's just start off with it, is a beverage pricing problem. So this is similar to something you might have seen uh, in high school. Um, and here we are um, given two equations, and or two pieces of information. The first is a, a cost of beer. Uh, a beer is five bucks, and wine is eight fifty per glass. I don't know how much, so I have no idea if these are reasonable prices. So let's say for the record that they are. Um, and on one day at the bar, they tally up everything and they find out that they sold the total number of wine and beer glasses they sold was 150. And the amount of money they made was $855. So B is my unknown number of beers and W is my unknown number of wine glasses. Um, and what I would like to know is, uh, and let me write my second piece of equation, which is $5 of beer plus $850 per wine. Uh, the total was... $855. So the second equation, first equation has units of glasses, and second equation you're working with units of, of money, dollars. Um, the question is how much, um, how many beers were sold and how many glasses of wine were sold. Now, if you're given this problem, you would use substitution. You would find it, for example, you would say B equals 150 minus W. I won't go through this in detail, but you could take this B, plug it into here, the second equation. Now you have an equation that's purely in W, solve for W, come back here, solve for B, and you're done. So two equations, two unknowns, you use simple algebra to solve it using uh, substitution. Um, now that the scaling of that and the amount of uh, numbers that are required to calculate, we'll see later results in... Um, the actual number of operations required to solve that scale as n cubed, where n is the number of unknowns. Um, there are people who have done it slightly less than n cubed, but we'll call it n cubed number of unknowns operations. So it grows quite quickly, um, and when you're solving large sets of PDEs, it's not uncommon from your number of unknowns to be 10 million, 50 million, even greater than that. So um, you, at, when you're dealing with cube growth, uh, the growth of number operations as a cube of um, your problem size, things get out of control pretty quickly. So what we need to do, what we're going to do is write this generically. Here's our system of equations. Let me just erase this so we can have this on the same page here. So I'm erasing my solution, my quick solution method. What we're going to do is take this and write this in a new form. So I'm going to write 1, 1, and then I'm going to write B, W equals 150, 855. I'll, I'm just going to fill the numbers in here, and then I will go through them and see what they mean. Okay. So what I've done here is I've written this set of equations in matrix uh, as in the form AX equals B. So this is A, this is X, and this is B. Okay? So, as I said before, we don't know X, but we knew A and B. And you can check here. If I, if I write, if I multiply this matrix by this vector, right, I get 1 times B plus 1 times W equals 150, which is exactly my first equation here. And then my second comes from dotting this row here with this vector. And I get 5 times B plus 850 times W equals 155. Exactly the second equation. So this system of equations here, two equations, two unknowns, can be written in this fundamental, um, in this fundamental way. AX equals B, where the unknown stuff is in X. And it's a vector of unknowns given a constant matrix A known, constant matrix, uh, constant vector B known. Now, um, there are other problems we can write in that manner. 
This next one is a, uh, an age-structured model. So let's have a look at that. Remember our age-structured model, we have the, uh, the first year age group at year K plus 1 was equal to the fecundity of that first year age group last year plus the fecundity of the second year age group last year plus the fecundity, this is a, th a three-year class system, fecundity of the third year class last year. We have this year's, or next year's, right, let me say this year is K and next year is K plus one. Next year's, um, let me say it backwards, sorry. K plus one is this year, K is last year. So I have this year's, um, this year's second year class is going to be the survivors of last year's first year class, and this year's third year class is going to be the survivors of last year's second year class. So we have this familiar looking system. We've already written this same system of equations in the form like this, where we had n1, n2, n3, our state vector containing the number of first, second, and third years at any given time at year k plus 1 was equal to the Leslie matrix as f1, f2, f3, s1, 0, 0, 0, s2, 0 times our state vector last year or the previous year. So we could move what we've already done in classes, taken information from the previous year, we can propagate it to information a year later by simply multiplying by this matrix, which we refer to as A. And here we wrote this system of equations as N as a vector next year is equal to L times N as a vector this year. And if you keep multiplying um, vectors over and over again, um, or vectors by L, you're propagating it a year and a year and a year at a time. If we flip this problem around and we say, if we've observed this population right here, and we want to know what population it came from, essentially, we want to go backwards in time. We write it this way. What population was there previously? LNK equals NK plus 1. If we write it backwards, we have known this year, known transfer matrix. This is containing those biological quantities, namely fecundity and survivorship. What is the population it must have come from? So this is now an implicit set of equations, a linear set of equations linear in both these cases because the unknowns, which are now going to be these, I'll underline them in orange, the unknown quantities, last year's um, population classes, appear in these equations in linear form. There's a k there, but that's a year number. It's not an exponent. So they're, they're all linear. Remember, nonlinear equations have the unknown variable in uh, as a square or other, uh, other than to the first power. We saw that also in the beer and wine. This is b to the 1, w to the 1, b to the 1, w to the 1. They're all to the 1 power. And that allows us to write it in this form. If they were not, for example, if this were squared here, we can't write it. We couldn't write it into this form right here. We'd, be, we'd have to be linearize it or solve it as a full nonlinear system, which is hard to make generic. Um, so again, we can also write the Leslie system in the same method, AX equals B. All right, so in the next, um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at solutions of this. What does it mean to find a solution of this? And most importantly, the point of this lecture is, can we find a solution? Can we find a solution? And then under what circumstances do we find it? And how can we check beforehand whether we're going to find a solution or not? We're going to engage in 
apologize. My computer has frozen. Hello. One second. Here's the one. Hello. Okay, I'll, I'll stop it here. It's not mirroring my writing on the iPad. Um, and we'll pick up and we'll talk about when we find a, when do we find a um, solution to this equation right here.